Okay, so first look at the block. Everything seems to look okay in terms of the pistons. But looking into cylinder number three, I think this is, I can see the damage that was described by the seller. I have a few marks up here, but you cannot feel them with your finger. And I think this may come out with a rehone. You can still see all of the cross hatching in every single cylinder. So I think this block may be reusable. Now moving on to the head, as soon as we flipped it over, this is what we noticed. As you can see, huge chunk missing out of this exhaust valve here that's obviously been burnt and this one is probably not too far behind it as well you can see this cylinder is very wet the rest are pretty much fine but probably going to need two exhaust valves there I guess the head gasket can now come off this engine can now be flipped over so we can take the sump off. Yep. Wasn't too tight. No. There's the crank hub removed along with the crank gear. Okay, so engine has been turned over. Time to remove the sump, just held in by a bunch of eight millimeter bolts. shouldn't be held on by silicon, should just be a dry gasket, yep. There's no chunks in the sump, which is always good. Time to remove the oil pump, looks like it's just held in by three Torx 45 bolts. the oil pump removed. Okay so next thing to do is just remove this I guess it's like a protective plate just held in by four 10 millimeter bolts. Time to release the end cap rod bolts, just E10. I'm going to start at, I guess, cylinder number one, and two, and three, and four, then just so I can keep everything in order.
This is a quick look at what the rod bearing looks like. Virtually no wear on that. Very good condition. That's all four pistons now removed. Okay then, so now that we have all four pistons now removed, essentially what we're left with is the bare block and the crankshaft. Now the block itself is separated into two sections. So you have this lower section here. That essentially just houses the caps for the big end bearings. So I think what I'm gonna do, because I need to actually take the engine block off of the stand, to separate them because there is a couple of bolts around here that I can't do, you know, because obviously the engine stand is holding the two uh, sections of the block together. I think I'm actually just going to crack the big end bearing bolts loose first. There is just these eight bolts here, I believe the 16 millimeter. So I'll crack those loose first, then I'll take the engine off of the engine stand and I can separate these two sections then. This and these are going to be pretty tight. So as you can see, the block is now off of the engine stand. We have it here on the table. I'm just gonna go around and crack loose all of these eight millimeter bolts. So we should be able to remove all of the big end cap bolts now. Okay, so was trying so hard to get this thing off. And I was like, why is it not removing? Then noticed these two caps. So there is two of them, one there and one there. And as you can see, it has revealed another main bearing cap bolt. So there is in fact 10 of these bolts, not eight. So you need to remove this plug. As you can see, it's pretty destroyed to so this one need replacing after, but yeah, just smash a screwdriver in there, pop that off, and it should reveal two extra bolts. Okay, so as you can see, the main bearing cap housing has now been removed. It came off nice and easy once those two remaining main bearing bolts were removed. Just gave it a bit of a lever. And here's how we're looking now. Crankshaft is now ready to come out. There we go. 
go. Do need to keep these thrush washers safe. Now the final thing to remove is these spray nozzles. Looks like just held in by an Allen bolt. We can actually have our first lock at the main bearings. And I can already see, again, minimal wear on these. These are perfect. They look brand new. So yeah, these spray nozzles take a six millimeter Allen. They shouldn't be dead tight. Let's just crack these loose with a torque wrench. pretty tight. That's the final one removed and that is the block fully stripped down. Okay then, so there we go. Complete engine stripped down, done. Was things as bad as I thought they were gonna be? I mean, we don't really know for sure yet. We still have some measurements to do. We need to measure the cylinders and uh, you know see if everything is uh, you know still within tolerance. But as far as like the damage that you can see is definitely nowhere near is what I thought. I do believe that this engine block is savable. And I also think all the pistons are savable as well. There's, I've had a look at them all. I can't seem to see any damage to them. Obviously we will, um, you know, install all new piston rings and I'll probably actually upgrade them to the three piece style piston rings because I think they're only one piece. Uh, at the moment that's that's like a common upgrade to do when rebuilding these engines and um yeah i guess we'll uh, i guess we'll just leave this one here hopefully you guys have enjoyed it this has been uh definitely a new experience for me like i said i've never done a complete engine rebuild before that's why i sort of decided to uh take on this task i wanted to challenge myself and i wanted to you know sort of have the experience of doing one myself but um, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I guess now it is time to get busy with this parts washer and uh, just wait for a whole bunch of parts to arrive. But yeah, like I said, hopefully you all have enjoyed it anyway. Please give this video a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you have not already done so, and I will see you all in that next one.